Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm sitting out here in the boat getting ready to head out on the river and to uh, hopefully catch a bunch of bass fishing a way that I truly enjoy to fish. Before I get into it, I just want to remind you all that if you have not subscribed to the channel that you should hit that subscriber button. It gets you entered into my monthly prize drawing giveaways. And at the same time, guys, if you want to support the channel, you can head over to therealshot.com. The link is in my description. Purchase your tackle, outdoor clothing, uh, hunting gear, all over there at therealshot.com. Use the discount code STEFAN10. Get 10% off your order. It helps the channel out. You save a little bit of money. It helps the local tackle store out. It's a win-win for everybody. So, guys, what I'm going to be looking for today are sandbars. A lot of people, I think, are pretty intimidated by a sandbar. And so, you know, I think the first question is, what exactly is a sandbar? You know, I, I guess I would explain it this way. If you were to look, you know, at a river section and you see a shallow sandbar, that a lot of times it's only a couple inches of water to a couple feet of water, uh, they're probably what I'm talking about here. And specifically, what it is, is you've got current that has dumped sand in certain areas. And that sand has, you know, has fallen to a spot and has created a shallow spot. They're pretty much the areas that you want to avoid with your boat uh, when you're running because you'll get stuck on top of them. But what happens is when you have a pile of sand that's been dumped in an area, that shallows up the water depth, which creates increased current flow. And if you have increased current flow, you have more nutrients and more bait being brought through an area that then creates an ambush spot for bass to feed. Large mouth, small mouth, it really doesn't matter. All the game fish will set up on sandbars. And generally what happens is you'll get to a point, so you've got a shallow sandbar, and then you get to a point where the sandbar just drops off. And it may only drop off a foot, it may drop off 10 feet, but you'll have the fish sit right in that deep water at the lip of the sandbar and wait for that bait and nutrients to be brought right over their head. So you've got faster moving current because it's shallow water, and then you've got an ambush spot that the fish can sit out of the current waiting for, for bait to be brought over their head. Really very classic river fishing spot. Uh, but I gotta tell you, it's one of those things that can be intimidating because on a lot of rivers, like the Mississippi River or the Wisconsin River, there are a lot of sandbars. So a lot of times you may have to fish a bunch of sandbars before you find one that's productive. So just because you head out on the water and you fish one or two sandbars and don't get bit doesn't mean that the sandbar bite is not going on. It means that you may have not have found the right sandbar. When you do find the right sandbar, it's not uncommon to catch a lot of fish off of one spot. So guys, you got to head out there and check the sandbars if you fish rivers. I do want to state that sandbar bites usually are, are a summer thing into the fall. You know, the fish earlier in the year are trying to get out of some of that current and are more in backwater areas. But once the summer water, summer weather hits and you've got the warmest water, water out there, the fish are going to be looking for those faster current areas. And the sandbars create that and at the same time create good feeding places, which is what makes them so good. So when you're fishing a sandbar, you may have a sandbar that's, you know, 300 yards long. Generally, there are areas on the sandbar that are better than, you know, the rest of the sandbar. It's the sweet spot, per se. And what you're looking for could be uh, anywhere where you get a little bit of an indent into the sandbar. So generally, a sandbar is moon-shaped. The ends of it are going to have, like, little notched-in deep water channels. And then, you know, you've got a half-moon shape that runs across the sandbar. But if you have any place on that front lip that has either a shallower spot where you have faster water, almost like a riffle, or you have a, a notch into the sandbar for whatever reason that has a little bit deeper water running into the sandbar, those are gonna be your prime areas. So those are the first areas you should look. But if you do find a sandbar that is loaded with fish, the whole sandbar should be good. That's the ideal situation. But if you don't find that, usually you'll find 
a key little spot on each sandbar that holds the fish. The, the problem with sandbars is that they change every year. They can change from day to day. You know, if you have high water, if you've got shallow water one day, you get a bunch of rain, water fluctuates and goes up three feet. You know, you go back to your spot after that water backs, the water drops back down. The sandbar is completely different. So you may have had a great sandbar that now doesn't hold any fish. So that's the one issue with sandbars. It does take a lot of effort on the angler's part to stay on top of which sandbars are the best. But again, guys, it's worth it. If you can spend the time out there to figure out which sandbars are producing, a lot of times they'll produce all year long if you don't have any drastic changes to the river flow conditions. Uh, when heading out on the water, I've got a handful of baits, guys, that are really what I fish when fishing sandbars. Uh, the first and my go-to bait is always going to be a topwater bait. Uh, I really like walking baits. This is a Berkeley Jaywalker. Any sort of walking bait is a really good bait because you can, you know, you can throw out your topwater and work it from super shallow water over the lip and usually try to work it right along the lip for a good distance. Uh, top waters are great because of that you can throw it up into two inches of water and the bait will run fine and come over the lip which is what the fish are doing is looking up onto the lip so they're waiting for that bait to come by and a lot of times they're only in a foot or two feet of water which makes a top water definitely in their strike zone uh, you know a chapo style bait's really good as well the only style that i don't like to throw as much is a, a popper style bait i like a moving bait just because you're dealing with current and I want something to draw the attention to the fish. So that, that a top water is a must. Next up, I like to throw a swim jig. This is a dirty jig swim jig with a Berkley the Deal on the back. A swim jig or a swim bait is another great bait. Uh, it just allows you to cover a lot of water, a lot of sandbars, keep your bait in the strike zone. And really the fish for the most part are gonna be feeding on bait fish. And a swim jig is a great, great uh, imitator of bluegill or shad or the smaller fish that are that are being fed on uh, on that sandbar. Next up, I like to throw shallow uh, shallow running square bills. This is a Berkeley square bowl. Uh, really, any sort of sort of shallow running crankbait is a really good bait for fishing sandbars because. You're fishing only in a few feet of water for the most part normally. So you don't want a super deep diving crankbait. But again, you want something that will come down that lip and get right into their face during the, in the strike zone. And a square bill is a really good crankbait to do it. Uh, generally, again, I'm throwing colors that mimic the bait fish that are in that body of water. Last up, if you're not getting a reaction strike on some of the power fishing baits, I like to go with a Carolina rig with a smaller creature style bait like this Berkeley Pit Boss, uh, Zoom Speed Craw is a good bait. Uh, any, your, your Berkeley Generals or any sort of uh, plastic stick worm is really good, but you wanna throw it on a Carolina rig. A Carolina rig is a great bait for fishing the sandbars. It allows you to drag that bait down the lip of that sand and bring the bait down with it, but yet you've got you know a couple feet of leader line which allows that bait to flow down with the current in a much more natural manner, which is really important when fishing current and fishing sand drops. So you really, those are the those are the baits I'm throwing. You got your top waters, you got your swim jigs and swim baits, shallow running cranks, and then Carolina rigs. That's what you need for heading out on the sandbars. I hope this was helpful, guys. If it was, hit the like button, share it on your social media pages, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And stay tuned, we got new tips coming out every day.